This happened when I was about 15, and I believe that would be around 2005. Forgive me for missing pieces in this story, as I'm trying to remember everything. It was a pretty scary moment for me that I don't bring up on a regular basis, so some things have been lost over time. My friend Hannah had just turned 16, and instead of having a huge party, her mom agreed to let her go to the mall with a few friends alone. So, she invited me and our mutual friend Michelle. Hannah's parents were going to be running errands around the city, Michelle and I were in track together, so she stayed at my house after the meet the night before, and my parents dropped us off at the mall the next day. Both Hannah and my parents told us to call them when we were done, and they would come and pick us up. However, my parents also said that if I didn't call earlier, they would be back around 6pm to pick us up. I had one of those little Nokia phones, prepaid, so it was only for emergencies. I usually just sent a quick text instead of calling, so it worked fine, and I felt cool having a cell phone at that age anyways. I'm not sure what Hannah's parents' rules were at the time though, or if there were any, other than call when we were done. My parents, however, told us that we were not allowed to leave the mall. There was plenty to do there, food courts, restrooms, rest areas, and we had spending money so there was no reason for us to leave anyways. My parents also trusted me to go there without adults. I'd been there many times before with my younger sister, and was always responsible so they had no issues with the idea. Michelle's parents also trusted her with me, as they thought that I was smart and mature. I'm still close friends with Michelle, and her parents told my parents this. Anyways, just trying to lay out the rules that we had and what we had on us. So it was three of us, two of us with cell phones. Michelle's phone had broken prior to this event, and she hadn't been able to replace it yet. And we were dropped off at around noon, and were left to be the young adults with a sense of independence for a few hours. Since it was Hannah's birthday... We let her lead the way. We went to a few of our favorite stores, and after goofing around at the small shops in the walking areas, we made our way to the little ice cream stand. You know the one, with the frozen bald ice cream? And while we enjoyed our ice cream, we noticed two boys carrying skateboards and going into Spencer's. We all agreed that they looked about our age, and that they were cute, so... We decided to walk back towards the store to see if we could get their attention. At this time, we were all excited to do this, if not maybe a bit shy at the time though. We looked in the store and noticed that they were standing near the front, seemingly looking at a wall of t-shirts. Hannah made a loud noise, like a weird laugh, which got them to look over. Cue the random giggling and faking to quiet each other down. It succeeded in getting their attention, though, and we started walking quickly past the store. This was close to the end of the mall, so we took the elevator down. At this time, we heard someone shouting from above, and when we looked up, it was the same two boys. They mentioned for us to wait for them, so we stopped at the bottom. They introduced themselves, but... I'm not sure what their names were now, so I'll call them Alex and Brett. They said that they were 16. They were taller than us, but we just thought it was because they were guys. They're going to be taller than us, right? I had a brother that was two years younger than me and was almost the same height, so I didn't have any reason to think otherwise. We started talking and shared what school we went to. They said they lived in another county, so we didn't recognize the school that they mentioned. We continued walking together towards the other side. One of the guys, Brett, seemed to pay attention to me, which I didn't expect. I didn't often get flirted with, so I was a bit shy, and I didn't know how to respond to it. 
We continued walking until we got to another store that we walked around in, and then stopped in one of the side halls that had restrooms. The boys pulled out their skateboards and were trying to do tricks and show off. Someone came by and told us that we needed to stop and move along, so we continued walking. Alex then suggested that we go to the skate park that was nearby. He said that Brett had a permit, so they took his car here and we would all fit in it. Hannah was immediately all for the idea. Michelle seemed eager to go, but also looked to me for permission, in a way. I initially wanted to, thinking it'd be fun, but I also knew that I wasn't supposed to leave the mall. I was at that age where I didn't want to look lame and hold my friends back, so I agreed that I would go with them, but I wanted to at least call my parents and tell them where we were going. Hannah told me not to worry about it, saying we could just have them bring us back here before six, and it would be like we never left. Michelle then begged me not to call, because then she would have to ask her parents since she knew that they would tell her no. And that's when Alex said that if I didn't want to go, I could always stay behind and wait for them to get back. The way he said it almost seemed mocking in a way. Like I was too scared or uptight, and like he didn't want me to go anyways. This, of course, upset me, and between Brett seeming to be into me and me not wanting to disappoint my friends, I decided to go. As we started walking towards the exit, I started to get the weird sense of dread, like something bad was going to happen. I didn't know if it was going to be something at the park, or maybe it was just potential trouble that I was about to get in. So, I thought I would give one more try of at least telling my parents. I pulled out my phone as we were walking to send a quick text when I was caught off guard by Brett coming up next to me and grabbing my phone. I was surprised, and I tried to be cool about it and ask for it back. But then, as he walked backwards so he could face me, he put my phone down the front of his pants and winked at me. Again, I hadn't really been given attention like this, not to mention we were only 15, so I quickly quieted down, as he teased me about turning red. I walked in silence with Brett now walking next to me until we got to the entrance. I was still feeling on edge about the situation, so I was desperately trying to find some way to stop us or delay us. I asked them before we left if I could use the restroom. My friend seemed fine with it, but Alex appeared to be annoyed. Brett offered to walk me to the restrooms, but they were pretty close to the doors, so... I declined his offer. I quickly walked off and waited in there trying to figure something out. I thought maybe that I could stop someone that came in there for their phone or maybe get Hannah's attention and talk her into letting me use her phone. However, after several minutes of no one coming in, I decided to walk out. Unfortunately, my friends were nowhere to be found. I walked around the entrance, then outside, and they were seemingly gone. I was scared, upset, and offended. I assumed they left me when I went to the restroom. I started crying a bit when a woman noticed me and asked me if I was okay, or if I was lost. I vaguely explained that I had lost my friends, and I asked to use her phone as I didn't have mine. I remember calling, expecting to be in a lot of trouble, but instead my mom just sounded worried and said that she would be right there. The lady waited for me until she showed up and explained what she had witnessed to my mom as well. Then I explained everything to her that happened. She was immediately worried about the other girls, but also agreed that I did the right thing by not going. Things moved pretty fast at this point, I know my mom tried to call my cell phone, and it would just ring until it went to voicemail. She called the cops and had people looking around the mall and doing pages for them in case they just ran off somewhere. She also called Michelle and Hannah's moms to tell them what had happened. They showed up at the mall too, and after we all drove around the mall and even the skate park that they had mentioned. 
they weren't there either. I had to give a description of what the two boys looked like, and the rest of that evening was nerve-wracking. We went home, and I continued to try calling both my phone and Hannah's, and they both started going straight to voicemail, which frightened me even more. I didn't want to sleep that night, as I was worried that something had happened to them, and I couldn't help but feel like I should have done something more to stop it. My parents kept assuring me that I did the right thing, as I was at least able to provide descriptions. It wasn't until the next day that we finally got an update. This was information that I got both from my parents and Michelle and Hannah after I was able to see them again. When they got to his car, they learned it was some old, beat-up van, soccer mom style. However, when they got in the sliding door, Alex jumped in the back with them and immediately demanded them not to scream, and he pulled out a knife and tied their wrists and legs together, threatening if one of them tried something, they would kill the other one. Then they took off, driving around and they began fighting over where to go. During this, Brett apparently lost control of the vehicle, flipping it over a small embankment. Alex was actually killed after being ejected from the van, and somehow my friends made it out with minor injuries. The boys had both phones and had turned them off, which is why we weren't able to get a hold of them. And Brett had been knocked unconscious, so they all just had to lay there praying that someone would show up. Thankfully, someone was driving by later that night, and saw them and called for help. When Brett finally came to, he explained to the police pretty quickly what had happened. They wanted to try to kidnap someone, so they brought some rope and duct tape from their home, and that was about as far as they had planned. They didn't know what they wanted to do from there, or even where to take them. So, that's when their plans started to deteriorate. I don't remember the charges that Brett ended up getting, but I do remember that he was tried as an adult, because he was actually 18, not 16 like they claimed. Michelle was not allowed to go anywhere unless there were adults with us, and she wasn't allowed to hang out with Hannah anymore. And my parents still allowed me to go shopping without adults, and even with Hannah, as they did trust me, but they said that if she ever tried that again, I was supposed to make a scene and do whatever I needed to do to get out of it, and to stop her too. Hannah continued being quite the risk taker, so my parents were a bit cautious of her. Her parents weren't even that worried about the situation, which I know speaks a lot too. Anyways, overall, this situation was scary, and I'm very glad that I trusted my gut. You just can't always trust someone's true intentions, no matter how normal it seems. Oh, and I also did get my old Nokia phone back, and it actually wasn't damaged at all.